For most of us, reaching a big dream can be overwhelming because we're so focused on the scale of the overall task ahead of us. However, there is a secret that most successful people employ that helps making achieving their goals significantly easier. In this video, we're going to cover exactly what this is, how it benefits you and how to action it yourself. So, what is the great secret that most successful people use to achieve their lofty goals? It is the process of breaking down tasks into easy to complete and manageable habits. That might seem a simple idea, and truthfully it is. But the problem is that the average person simply doesn't apply this idea effectively, instead letting their thoughts of their biggest ambitions cloud their judgement and make them fear the work that's involved to get there. Look at it this way. Say you want to eat healthier and cut down on sugar. The thought of big changes to their diet can seem difficult to most people, especially if you crave certain sugary treats on a regular basis. However, instead say I asked you to cut out the daily chocolate bar that you eat an hour after lunch and instead replace it with a healthy alternative. For example, some berries or nuts to help your sweet craving and to help you feel satiated. Now, knowing this is the only immediate change needed, chances are you probably don't feel it's such a difficult task. After all, I'm not asking you to completely shift your diet, rather just asking you to make a simple change at one point in the day. Here is the key element. This small change is significant, because now you've got the ball rolling and have started to build momentum. Moving to the next change in your diet will actually be easier because not only have you made some progress in that direction, but equally you will be able to feel the benefits of the first change, even if small. And as you keep adding these small but significant changes in your eating habits, you will soon find your unhealthy diet has been replaced by something much, much more healthy. So why does this work? Let me give you a personal experience actually related to dietary changes I made in my own life recently. I actually have a very sensitive autoimmune system and as a result actually had a terrible flare up of psoriasis all over my body. Knowing that gluten and dairy can often be critical contributing factors for increased histamine levels in the body, I thought to reduce this in my diet. Knowing that I tend to eat bread quite regularly, one change I made to reduce gluten was to eat less bread and replace it with rice in a lot of the dishes I ate. I also reduce dairy as I now avoid milk based drinks such as tea and coffee and instead consume other non-dairy hot drinks. Likewise I chose to reduce cheese, choosing to make other meals I enjoy more often that don't have cheese. To give some perspective, I still allow myself some gluten and dairy rather than going cold turkey as I knew that making drastic changes would be more challenging. But whereas I was having these daily in some form before, I now limit them to maybe once a week. However, the small changes don't end there, as when I make dishes I still make food I enjoy, but now I consciously take care to make healthy changes to the recipes where possible. They are often so small that the end result is almost negligible, but the benefits are significant. And it works for a couple of reasons. The first is that I feel a dopaminergic effect to help me feel better about the progression I make towards reducing the risk of psoriasis flare up but also in the fact that I can literally feel the benefits of eating healthier. This gives me the motivation to keep going, to keep tweaking and changing things to help me progress towards greater benefits. It's the momentum principle taking effect. However, the second reason it works is because the changes I've been making are fairly easy for me to make. For example, reducing bread consumption and eating rice instead for me is not at all difficult as I maintain a carbohydrate staple of my diet without feeling any sense of loss. For me, dairy has actually been even easier, as it allows me to be more creative with the hot drinks I consume, which in truth I enjoy as they are noticeably lighter. That creativity is also applied in the food I eat. For example, I recently ate a burger, but rather than putting on cheese and mayo, I went with alternative toppings and sauces. The burger was no less flavourful or inferior, it was just a little different, catering to other cravings I have for flavour. Since then, I've also done what I said earlier, replacing sugary treats with more fruit including dates to cater to my sweet tooth. Again, proving that continuously small changes have led to significant results. 
The question now leads on to, how do I apply this? I have focused quite heavily on dietary changes so far, but in truth this idea can be applied to any aspect of life. The first step to applying the principle is to identify the change you want to see take place. This might be health related as already discussed, but it can equally apply to performing better in a particular skill or at work. Once you identify what you want to accomplish, you need to work out what change is needed in your life to help you accomplish this goal. For example, if you want to make progress in your job, then you may need to work for longer hours to help develop certain skills and aid in your learning and growth. After you understand what you need to do, the next step is to identify the plan to do it. This is the stumbling block for most people, as they are so focused on the macro goal they want to achieve, they get overwhelmed by the work needed to get there. For example, if they want to develop a new skill at work, they will often feel they need prolonged hours of learning, and the problem is that the idea of doing numerous hours of overtime at work is off-putting to pretty much anyone. However, rather than planning to do extensive extra work in the short term, it's of significantly greater benefit to plan for the long term. Instead of planning hours of overtime, it is much easier to plan for a little overtime, for example 30 minutes at the start or end of your working day. This is a much easier obligation to fulfil, but equally when you add up those daily half hours, in a month you'll be averaging about 11 hours of time to develop a skill. That is around 132 hours or around 6 days per year and over 10 years would reach around 60 days. A person who can build consistent habit to dedicate that much time to learn new skills will see incredible results in their career. All of this comes down to the classic tortoise versus hare situation. Sure the hare gets the immediate gains, but over time it is much harder to maintain this intensity over a prolonged period. However, the key step is thinking long term and setting yourself up with easy to maintain small habits that can lead to significantly greater results over time. And there's one fact that we need to consider here that I haven't mentioned until now, that is the compounding effect of maintaining a positive habit. After all, you won't only develop a new skill, but you can then use that knowledge and experience you gain from that skill to help you progressively improve in other skills increasing momentum in your growth as you grow more and ultimately, catapulting you to success.